I'm just gonna take you along with me. Let's go, Basti. All right, so we made it to the gym. We are here. And I totally forgot to let you know we're doing a back and bicep workout. So let's get right into this workout because I already drank my pre-workout and I am ready. Guys, don't forget to comment down below any content that you are looking for or any questions that you might have. And don't forget to follow me on my other social medias. Let's get to it. And as always, we're starting with dynamic stretching. I always tell all of my clients and even you guys, you have to warm up before engaging in any physical activity because you want to prepare your body for the exercise as well as increasing blood flow to your muscles, which also reduces the risk of injury. You have the option to do cardiovascular warm up, five to 10 minutes like jumping jacks, jogging in place, high knees, or jump row. Choose any activity to elevate your heart rate. I really prefer dynamic stretching because I'm working on improving my flexibility and I also want to increase my range of motion. Dynamic stretches are movement that take your body through a full range of motion. For example, as you see here, arm swings, you have hip circles, walking lunges, there's so many. However, please avoid static stretching. Holding a stretch for an extended period during a warm up is more suitable for a cool down. You could also do sport specific movement this is one of my favorite warm-up to do with a client who actually is an athlete because i am going to include movements specific to the activity that they are about to perform example if you're going for a run include dynamic movement with leg swings or hip circles if you're doing weight training perform light sets of the exercise you'll be doing during your workout remember to start gradually and increase the intensity as your body warms up if you have any concern or specific questions about this workout feel free to comment down below and i will answer to them now it's time for the workout and our first move is single arm rows these are excellent to target your dorsi trap and near deltroids your back should be straight and you're working on with the dumbbell should be fully extended hanging straight down make sure that you're pulling the dumbbell upward towards your hip keeping your elbows close to your body squeeze your shoulder blade as you reach the top of the movement inhale as you lower in the dumbbell and exhale as you lift in the dumbbell Keep your back straight and avoid rounding your shoulders. Engage your core to maintain stability. Focus on pulling with your back muscles rather than using momentum. If you're using dumbbells, I would suggest you to change them to a lighter weight. We're gonna move on to standing chest flies. Make sure to hold a light dumbbell in each hand. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart and maintain good form. Extend your arms straight out to the sides. Make sure that it's shoulder height. Bring your hands together in front of your body, crossing them at the chest height. Keep a slight bend in your elbows throughout the entire movement. Using lighter dumbbells for higher repetition can contribute to muscle endurance as well as toning. This is beneficial for people who start in their fitness journey or those who are trying to recover from injuries. And as I always say, listen to your body. If you've experienced any type of pain, adjust the weight. We're moving on to kneeling rows. This is an exercise that I usually do when I'm actually in the gym, but I'm trying to replicate it at home. If you were in the gym, you will be kneeling on the bench with one knee, ensuring your back is straight and is parallel to the floor. The other foot should be on the ground for stability. Reach down and pick up the dumbbell with one hand. Either at home or in the gym, Make sure to squeeze your shoulder blade at the top of the movement to engage the muscles in your back. Pull the dumbbell towards your hip by bending your elbows and always keep it close to your body. Inhale as you lower in the dumbbell. Exhale as you pull the dumbbell upward. Upright rows. Lift the waist straight up towards your chin, keeping it close to your body. Elbows should always be pointing upward as you lift, forming a V-shape with your body. Keep the dumbbell or the barbell, depending on what you have at home or available. Keep it close to your body throughout the movement. At the top of the movement, pause briefly, squeezing your shoulders muscles. Make sure not to be lifting the waist too high. We're doing plank extension. If you could add dumbbells to this movement, I would really advise it. Keep your body in a straight line from your head to your heels. Avoid sagging your hip or arching your back. Focus on control and also engage all the muscles within your body. Make sure that you're breathing. Inhale as you lift in your arms and legs and exhale as you're returning back to the plank position. Try holding the extended position for a moment. I want you to focus on your balance. 
I have to do a separate video just on bent over rows. I love this exercise. It's a compound exercise that primarily targets all the muscles in your upper back, particularly your dorsies and traps. This exercise plays a significant emphasis on your dorsi, which is the large muscle that gives the back a V shape. This movement is extremely important for the scapular retraction and your shoulder stability. We're moving on to hammer curls. I want you to maintain a stable stand. I want your elbows close to your torso and I want you to control the entire movement. I'm gonna be honest guys, hammer curls is not one of my favorite exercises, but I still do them. I put them in my program at least twice a week. I do it because I have to, but honestly, I don't love doing hammer curls. Comment down below if you feel the same. After your hammer curls, we are gonna move on to curls. We're moving on to dumbbell bicep curl. I would advise you to use a dumbbell, but if you wanna use a barbell, that's fine. The reason why I always suggest a dumbbell for bicep curls is because you wanna have more range of motion. Bicep curl helps you identify and also address strength and balances between your left and your right arm. We're moving on to cross body curls. This is your last exercise. And of course, I forgot to mention, you're doing all of these workouts for four sets of 15 reps. If you are a beginner, you wanna do three sets of 12. If you're trying to do a PR, you wanna do one set of one rep. It really depends what your goal is. For me, I'm always working on strength. So I'm always gonna do either from 12 to 15 reps. If you want any comment, if you want any tips on how you should be working out, just feel free to DM me or comment down below any questions like I always mention and I'm here to help you guys. I really love working out with you guys. Guys, I appreciate you so much. I really hope you enjoyed this workout. Don't forget to finish the workout and don't forget to cool down. Right after my strength training, I went over and I did my cardio. You already know what I did. And I did the Peloton. One of my favorite things to do is actually cycling. I do say classes on cycling. I think I have a video where I actually show where I went to my class. It's super fun. You get to meet other people. It's just a good way to just get your cardio in and also to protect your knees. Here you see me, I'm just having fun. I'm teaching you to have your chest open. You're looking always forward, you're moving. Your booty should be on the back of the side, which is the wider side. Guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next video.